Okay, so here I have a world, and I'd like to create a player stats menu that contains free sliders that the player can use to change their movement speed, jump amount, and how much gravity affects them. So here's how I go about doing so. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, if you were to use a VRC world prefab that comes along with the SDK, it contains an Udom behavior script. On the script, you'll see some values that can be changed to change the player's walk speed, run speed, etc. So if you just want to change the player's speed, I would just use the script. However, I would like the player to be able to change these values when they are playing the game, so the first thing I need to do is create some sliders for the player to move. But first, I need a canvas. I'm just going to click on my parent object, right click and go UI and create a canvas. I'm going to call this player settings. Now there are some settings on this that we need to change. First I'm going to change its layer to walkthrough. This will mean that we won't be able to collide with any of the UI elements which can cause some problems. Then I'm going to change render mode from overlay to world space. This will just make it an object in the world instead of being an overlay on the desktop window in VRChat. Once we have that we now need to make it a lot smaller because it's absolutely massive. So I'm just going to change the scale to 0.005 and 0.005 and then I'm going to change the scale of the Z to be something a bit smaller than that because if you don't do this and you're in VR you will notice that the collision point for any UI elements will be offset from the canvas and it just feels really weird and makes it really hard to use. So now that we've scaled the canvas we now need to make it a bit smaller but before we do that I'm just going to reset its position and rotation to be zero making it in line with our rotated object. Then I'm going to come up here and use this tool to make it roughly the correct size. Also you'll notice that my settings panel is on a bit of an angle so I'm just going to adjust that here but of course you can always fine tune it later. Afterwards I'm just going to adjust the width and height to be just right. Now that we have our canvas looking right the last thing we need to do is make this canvas interactable by the player. Come down to add component and create a VRC UI shape. And with that our canvas is complete. Now we need to create a slider. I'm going to select our canvas in the hierarchy, I'm going to right click it and create a UI slider. I'm then going to change its size to be roughly the correct size, I'm going to move a bit higher up in my menu and then I'm going to come into the slider settings and I'm just going to change navigation to be none. And I'll mean that no arrow keys or whatnot will affect the slider, so if you move left it won't also move the slider. Now I just want to rename this to movement slider and that's basically all we need to do for this. However I did notice that my slider is facing the wrong way due to my canvas being flipped so I'm just going to fix the canvas rotation and then just readjust my slider's position. So now that we have our first slider we should really make a title to say what the slider does. I'm just going to select my canvas again and create a UI text mesh pro. Now the difference between a regular text and a text mesh pro text is that text mesh pro will generate a mesh for the text while a regular text object will just do it via pixels. I would recommend only using the text mesh pro for any text that isn't going to be updated much as each time you update the text it has to regenerate the mesh for the text. Now you may have noticed that I also didn't get a pop up asking if I want to import anything and that is just because I already have the text mesh pro stuff installed. If you do get a pop up here you just want to click import essentials. Once you've got it installed I'm just going to come over here and change the text to say movement speed. I'm going to change its font size to be something a bit more reasonable though you could also just scale the object to make that work. I then want to hit this to make it underlined and then I'm just going to adjust its size once again. I'm going to move it again and with that we've created our first slider or at least its visuals. I'm just going to rename our text object to be text movement speed and now it's time to duplicate this. So I'm just going to select both of them. I'm just going to duplicate these with control D twice and move them down. I'm then going to come through and rename them and then I'm just going to rearrange it to separate the text and the sliders in the hierarchy but that's just personal preference. Okay so now that we have our sliders it's time to create our Udon script. So I'm just going to select my main parent object and I'm going to come over to add component and create an Udon behavior component. Now we just need a script to go inside this Udon behavior component. So I'm just going to come over to my project window. I'm going to right click then go create VRChat Udon Udon graph program asset and I'm just going to call this player stats menu. I'm then going to reselect our object. I'm going to put our script inside of it and then open up the Udon graph. Okay so now that we're in the graph we need to create a bunch of variables. So I'm going to come up and hit the plus button and I'm going to create a slider variable. I'm going to call this movement slider and I'm going to hit this little drop down menu and make it a public variable. Then I'm going to create a slider variable for my other two sliders and give them their corresponding names. Now I have my free slider variables it's time to create some more variables one for each of the player's stats to store the default values. We'll be using these default values in conjunction with the slider to scale the player's speed relative to what it was by default. Now all the player's stats values are stored as float variables so I'm just going to come up here and hit a plus button again and create five public float variables. And then I'm going to give them the corresponding names for the run, walk, strafe, jump and gravity variables. Now just to make sure you're on the same page if I was to hit the drop down menu on all my variables while I made my slider variables public because we want to change them inside the inspector these default values haven't been made public as we want to update them when the game starts. 
So with all that, we now have all the variables we need for now. The first thing we need to do is set what these default values are when the game begins. Now I'm going to assume you're using the VRC world prefab, and with that prefab, it has the VRC world settings Udon behavior on it to determine what your run, walk, and jump impulse will be. Now if we look at the script, we can see that it does all this on event start. So we need to make sure that our script is getting the default values after the script has run its bit of code. So if we come back to our script, and I'm just going to full screen this window with the shortcut shift spacebar, I'm then going to come into the graph and go right click create node, the shortcut for that is spacebar, event start. And this will get an event that will play when the game begins. However, we want this to play after the event start seen in the other script. Now, as far as I'm aware, in Udon Graph, there's no way to tell another script to play before your script, so we need to delay our logic to make it wait a frame to ensure that the script is finished. So we're going to add a one frame delay to make sure that our script plays after the other script. So I'm going to grab my event start node, and I'm going to plug that straight into the node Udon Behavior Send Custom Event Delayed Frames. We'll be using this node to delay the event by a frame, however we haven't actually made that event yet, so I'm going to come over here and create an event custom node. I'm just going to call this set default values. Now when this event plays, I'm going to plug it straight into a block node. We can create a block node by holding shift B and left clicking. And the first thing we need it to do is set the player's default run speed value. I'm going to grab our variable and hold down control to get a node that will set it. Now we need to set it to the local player's current run speed, so I'm going to create a player API get run speed node, and I'm going to plug that straight into the set run default. However, we need to say what player we want to get the run speed of, and in our case that is the local player, so I'm just going to plug a networking get local player node into the instance slot. Then I'm going to put the first arrow of my block node into the set run speed variable node. Now that we have something in our event, we can come back over to the send custom event delay frames node, and we're going to select our set default values event to be the one that calls after a frame has passed. Now we just need to repeat this process for the other four default values. I'm just going to drag and drop all the variables in and plug them all into my block node. Then to set all the variables, I'm going to create a player API get walk speed, get strafe speed, get jump impulse, and get gravity strength, and plug these all into the set default nodes. Also, make sure you don't forget to plug the local player into all the instance slots. So now when the game starts, it will wait a frame, and then it will play this event, which will set the default values for run, walk, strafe, jump, and gravity strength values. With that done, we now need to use these default values and combine them with their sliders so that when we change the sliders value, it updates the player's stats accordingly. In order to do this, we want to create another custom event. I'm going to come over here and create an event custom node, and I'm going to call this update player stats. We'll be calling this event whenever the slider value changes, and we'll be doing that on the slider UI. For this event, whenever it is called, we need to update the player's stats. To make this a little bit easier and less prone to errors when setting this up, I'm going to make it update all the values instead of just updating the values for one particular slider. First to start off with, let's just change the player's run speed. I'm going to come over here and create a player API set run speed, and I'm going to plug this directly in. Now we need to say what player's stats we are changing, so I'm going to create another networking get local player node and plug that into the instance slot. So now that we have a node to change the player's run speed, we just need to say what the new run speed will be. Now we could grab our default run speed and plug that directly in, but that will do basically nothing. We could also grab our movement slider and put that into a UI slider get value node, and this will set the run speed to be whatever the movement slider is. However, like I said earlier, I would like to instead proportionally add or reduce speed based on whatever the default value was. So to do so, we could use a float multiplication node and multiply the value by our default run speed. Now this would work, however there's a slight problem with this. Our movement slider is a linear slider where we really want this to be exponential. The reason being is, if we were to take an extreme example, if you were to go from a value of 1 to 2, it would be a lot different than going from a value of 500 to 501. They essentially both a jump of one step, however the actual notable change that you would notice would be very minimal in the second example. Now 500 would be way more than you could reliably move in VRChat, and it goes well beyond the speed that isn't completely game breaking. However, we will actually notice this in our world when we go from the value of 1 to 0. So because of this, we really want to make this exponential. Now, if instead of a multiplication node, if we were to use a mathf pow node, we could multiply our default run speed to the power of our slider value. However, this wouldn't really work as we'll run into issues, especially with the gravity strength, which by default is set to 1. So no matter what the slider changes to, it will never change as 1 to the power of any number is still 1. It would also not be very even when comparing the run, walk, and strafe speeds, which all use the same slider. So in order to get around this, we need to use a bit of math. 
If I was to instead grab our float value and use a stand-in value like 2, and then multiply the resultant value with our default value, we'll get a much more consistent result. However, now if the slide is at a value of 1, it does not equal the local player's default value. Now, we could work around this in the world, but we can do better here. If we were to start with a value of 2, and do our power operation with it, and then if we were to use a float division node, and then divide the resultant by 2, now if the slider equals 1, it will equal 1 when going through our math operations. And then if we're multiplying 1 by the default speed, our run speed will be the default value. However, if we just change this value to say 5, you'll notice it will increase our set run speed a lot faster. So we can use this number as a scale factor, and so the larger the number, the more it will change our stats. Now, there's probably something you want to change in Unity instead of having it hard-coded here, so I'm going to create a float const node, set it to 5 here, and then if I was to hold down C and click on it, it will create a public variable that we can use in the inspector. This is one of many new shortcuts found in Udon Graph, and you can see all of them if you come to the welcome menu. The keen-eyed among you may also see that we could have created the float const node by holding down 1 and clicking, but I'll be honest, I tend to forget the float shortcuts all the time as I rarely use them. Anyways, coming back into the graph, I'm going to change this float variable's name to be scale factor. Also notice that by using the shortcut, when we hit the drop down menu, it has made the variable public for us. However, it didn't inherit the value, and so we'd like the default value to be something higher than 0. So I'm going to change mine back to 5, but feel free to choose whatever you feel like. Now, with all this done, we should be able to change the player's run speed when we move the movement slider. That being said, we also want to update the other values, so I'm just going to select all of this and go Ctrl D to duplicate. Now on our new section, this is going to be for walk speed, we still want to use the movement slider for this, but we want to change the run speed default variable to be the walk speed default variable, and then we also want to change the player API set run speed to a player API set walk speed. Now that we've got all that, we can just join up the arrows here, and now this should change the walk speed as well. I'm then going to do the same for the strafe speed and join it back up. Now we also need to do this for the player's jump impulse, and for this one, do remember that you also need to change the slider that you're using, as now we want to use the jump slider. And last but not least, we also want to do the same for the player's gravity, but remember once again that you need to change the slider, because we want to use the gravity slider for this. Now, the last thing I want to add to the script is optional, but we might want to make it so that whenever the gravity slider is at its lowest point, we make the player's gravity to be zero, to make people feel like they're weightless. To do so, we simply want to create a branch node, the shortcut for this is hold down B and left click, we then want to grab the value of the slider, and check that it's at its lowest value. So we want to create a UA slider get minimum value node, and check if it matches the current slider value using a float equals node. If I was to give myself a bit more room here, we can set it so whenever these two values equal each other, we can set the gravity strength by copying these nodes here, and set it to be zero. Okay, so there was actually quite a few nodes there, however, if I was to overlook our entire script, we can see that on start, it will wait a frame before playing this event. That will set our custom default values by grabbing our run speed, and sending it to our run speed default float variable, making it equal our player's current run speed. It will then do the same for the other values, and with that we'll now have the 5 default values of our player. We can then come over here, and whenever one of our slider value changes, we can get it to call this event. This will then grab our slider value, multiply it by a scale factor in order to make this exponential, and then multiply it with our default value and set that as our new run speed. The code will then go through and do that for the player's walk, strafe, jump, and gravity strength as well. However, for the gravity strength, it will also check to see if the gravity slider is currently at its minimum value, and if it is, it will set our gravity to equal zero. Now, if you don't actually want to have this last feature, feel free to delete all of this and just join the two up. However, I personally like it, so I'll be keeping it in. So, with that complete, we now want to hit compile and come back into our scene view. Hit shift spacebar a second time to get out of full screen mode. Now that we're back in our scene, we can see our Udon behavior script, and it has a bunch of public variables. First, I'm going to reset our scale factor to equal its default value. Then, we need to tell it the three sliders that we are using, so I'm just going to drag and drop my movement, jump, and gravity slider into these three slots. And now we need to tell our sliders to reference our Udon behavior. So selecting our free sliders, I'm then going to come into the inspector and come down to the on value section, and then I'm going to hit this little plus button to create a slot. I'm then going to drag and drop our object that contains our script into the slot. I'm then going to hit this no function drop down, and then come down to the Udon behavior, and if I was to scroll down a little bit, select send custom event. Now we need to give it the name of the custom event that we want it to play whenever the slider changes. So I'm just going to come back into my Udon graph, come over to my update player stats event, and then I'm going to copy and paste its name into the slider. So now whenever the slider value changes, it will call this event. So now we can just come back into the scene view. We also have the values for our slider that we might want to change. 
Now I want the default value to be one and I want the minimum value to be something small. So I'm gonna go for 0 0.05 and then I'm gonna make the max value free. So there's a bunch of extra wiggle room for people to play around with. Awesome, I think now it's time to test this. I'm just gonna come up here and hit play. And now that we're in the world, we can see that if I increase the speed slider, we can see the player move a lot faster. You can also move it down and make the player walk really slowly. We can change our jump force so the player jumps a lot higher. And we can also change the gravity so the player has a lot more gravity on hand, which will make them land sooner. Or we could also just move that all the way to the bottom and let the player float away indefinitely. Awesome. So I hope you found this helpful. Feel free to leave a like if you liked it. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. And feel free to check out some of my other tutorials that I have on the channel. But until next time, bye.